The development of space stations has evolved dramatically over the past few decades, with each generation pushing the boundaries of what is possible in space habitation, starting with the Soviet Salyut 1, the first human-rated space station launched in 1971. Space stations then were initially small functional modules with limited pressurized volumes. The Salyut program set the stage for future developments but remained relatively basic in design. Following this, the Mir space station in the 1980s expanded on the concept, offering a larger, more robust platform for research. In the West, the Skylab space station, launched by NASA in 1973, also contributed to the understanding of long-duration spaceflight, though its size and scope were still modest. The International Space Station, ISS, launched in 1998, represents the pinnacle of current space station development with a pressurized volume of over 1,000 cubic meters. The ISS serves as a multinational research hub, supporting a wide variety of scientific experiments and long-term human missions in low Earth orbit. Similarly, China's Tiangong Station, although smaller than the ISS, is expanding and providing critical data on life in space. However, even these significant achievements have limitations, particularly when it comes to providing both the vast habitable space required for long-term human presence and the optimal conditions for industrial work. This is why astronauts have to endure harsh living conditions with limited amenities to simulate Earth, making long space missions physically and mentally demanding. However, there is one company that may address this issue and even offer spacecraft with significantly larger habitable volumes in pressurization, and that is Vast Space Company. The company's stations, particularly the future Starship-class modules and massive artificial gravity stations, are poised to provide hundreds, even thousands, of cubic meters of pressurized space. These stations are designed to accommodate not only a growing human population, but also the expanding needs of space-based industries. A core aspect of VAS approach is the integration of artificial gravity, a long-term goal to improve space habitability while addressing the significant health challenges associated with microgravity. Extended exposure to weightlessness on current space stations like the ISS leads to several health issues, including bone density loss, muscle atrophy, and cardiovascular problems. VAST aims to address these by incorporating artificial gravity, creating an Earth-like environment. This integrated design philosophy ensures that the station will not only serve as a living environment for astronauts, but also as a viable platform for economic activities by creating a space where industrial production can thrive in microgravity conditions, while also providing comfortable living spaces with artificial gravity. VAST aims to make space both habitable and commercially viable. This balanced approach could be a game-changer for humanity's long-term presence in space, offering solutions that address both human welfare and economic utility. VAST is setting a bold course for space habitation with a meticulously planned roadmap that begins with no-term milestones and scales up to revolutionary designs. The first step is the Haven Demo, scheduled for launch in early 2025. This initial deployment is a technology demonstrator designed to validate hardware and software systems in space. Besides the Haven demo, the spacecraft will fly subsystems and components that VAS plans to use for Haven 1 to increase their flight heritage and further reduce technical and operational risks ahead of the Haven 1 launch. The Haven Demo spacecraft will host a radio frequency communication system, guidance navigation, and control hardware and algorithms, solar array and power systems, and a propulsion system representative of what VAST intends to use with Haven 1. Following this, VAST will launch Haven 1, its first human-rated space station. The single-module Haven 1 space station is scheduled to launch no earlier than August next year atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket to low Earth orbit. Following the launch of Haven 1, the VAST 1 Crew Dragon mission will transport four individuals to Haven 1 for a 30-day stay. Haven 1 is a 10-meter-long and nearly 4-meter-wide cylindrical module equipped with solar panels generating approximately 1,000 watts of power. The station features a research facility with 10 mid-deck locker-sized payload slots, roughly the size of a microwave, designed to support experiments. Additionally, the station is engineered to support lunar artificial gravity through rotational motion. 
Haven One will be equipped with Starlink connectivity for broadband access, making it the first commercial space station to utilize the network. The final design of the station, unveiled this month, incorporates lessons learned from the ISS Haven One is set to become the world's first commercial space station when it launches. After the launches of Haven One, additional missions are planned for the station. Haven 1 will be succeeded by Haven 2, if selected by NASA's commercial low-Earth orbit destination, Claude, program in 2026. VAR CEO Max Howe announced Haven 2 on October 14th at the International Astronautical Congress in Milan, Italy. The first module of Haven 2, which is nearly 6 meters longer than Haven 1 and offers a larger habitable volume, is expected to launch in 2028 aboard a Falcon Heavy rocket. The full station is projected to be completed by 2032. The core module, with a diameter of 7 meters, will launch in 2030 aboard Starship. After the first four modules have been deployed, the fully assembled Haven 2 station will consist of the core module and eight additional modules. The core module will include an airlock to facilitate spacewalks and a larger observation dome than the one on the ISS. A larger version is also in development, Looking further ahead, VAS Vision expands to Starship-class modules, large scalable stations with a capacity for diverse activities. These modules, designed for deployment by SpaceX Starship or similar heavy-lift rockets, will offer substantial pressurized volume enabling more ambitious industrial and human operations. The roadmap culminates in the development of the Spinning Stick Station, an enormous artificial gravity station composed of multiple Starship-class modules. It will also have a volume of 500 cubic meters, which is half the volume of the ISS. This station will feature variable gravity zones, ranging from microgravity at its center to Earth-like gravity at its extremities. Such a design enables a balance between the industrial benefits of microgravity and the health advantages of artificial gravity, paving the way for sustainable long-term habitation and potential city-scale expansion in space. According to the plan, the station could become operational as early as 2028. Through this roadmap, VAST aims to lead the next era of space exploration by combining innovation, practicality, and a human-centered design vision. VAST has plans for a 110-meter-long rotating station made up of modules with a 7-meter diameter launched on Starship, capable of accommodating 40 people. This station is expected to be developed in the 2030s, with a complete fleet of stations and vision for the 2040s. With its ambitious vision, VAST is emerging as a formidable competitor in the commercial space station sector, asserting superiority over its rivals. One of VAST's greatest advantages is its financial independence. Being fully funded by private investments from billionaire Jed Maleb, without reliance on funding from NASA or government programs, VAST maintains control over its timelines and operations, avoiding the delays and limitations often associated with public funding. This allows the company to focus on rapidly and efficiently realizing its plans, creating a competitive edge in this rapidly growing field. In contrast, many of VAS competitors are facing significant challenges. Axiom Space, despite receiving over $100 million in funding from NASA, is currently grappling with severe financial difficulties. This casts doubt on their ability to meet deadlines and raises questions about their capacity to become a leading provider of commercial space stations. Similarly, Sierra Space, initially partnering with Blue Origin to develop its inflatable modules, has shown little clear progress recently. The lack of updates and tangible advancements has led to skepticism regarding their ability to execute the ambitious plans they've announced. Voss would like Haven 1 to launch around that time, while Axiom expects to add its first commercial module to the ISS. Howe said he believes the simplicity of a free-flying module will win out over the complexities involved with a module that's part of the ISS, including working with the station's various partners. If it's very complicated and there's a lot of requirements, you don't have the flight manifested. We think we will beat it, he said. Vast had not been founded at the time of the original NASA Claude competition, but how said competing in later phases of that program is a priority. We see NASA as our biggest opportunity, as our largest customer, he said.
Having Haven One in operation would give Vars an advantage over competitors yet to fly. We're not going to send you renders or prototypes in a warehouse. We have flight hardware. While the commercial aerospace sector is busy exploring various concepts to replace the capabilities provided by the ISS, several important questions have arisen regarding the future of human presence in space. Specifically, concerns focus on how humanity will continue its presence in low Earth orbit without at least a brief gap between the ISS and the next-generation commercial space station. The development of such stations is becoming an urgent issue as the ISS approaches its retirement age, and space agencies like NASA face the challenges of maintaining a steady human presence in orbit. The challenge of securing funding for the commercial space sector has become more difficult compared to the pre-pandemic period, when interest rates were low and investment was more abundant. Today, with the global economy still recovering and many industries dealing with the aftermath of COVID, space companies are facing an increasingly competitive and financially strained environment. Cam Gafarian, the interim CEO of Axiom Space, highlighted this issue recently when he stated that the market for commercial space stations isn't large enough to support multiple stations at the same time. His company, that's gotten backing from NASA, is currently struggling to raise funds to carry out their ambitious plans, making it clear that securing funding remains one of the sector's most significant hurdles. A notable company in the commercial space station, Bigelow Aerospace, was a major player in the development of inflatable gas modules, but unfortunately ceased operations. Founded in 1998 by hotel mogul Robert Bigelow, the company sought to revolutionize the commercial space industry by creating inflatable modules for space stations. These designs were based on NASA's Transship Inflatable Module Research, and Bigelow Aerospace successfully launched and tested three prototypes. One of the prototypes, the Bigelow Expandable Activity Module, BEAM, is still attached to the ISS, providing valuable data. However, despite these early successes, Bigelow Aerospace closed its doors in 2020 as a result of the COVID pandemic and the financial challenges that followed. This is a setback for the commercial space sector, as it highlights the difficulties companies face in maintaining operations and fulfilling their goals even with successful product demonstrations. In addition to these financial challenges, the ISS itself is facing its own issues, which could impact NASA's continued presence in low Earth orbit. The station, which has served as a crucial platform for scientific research for 20 years, is showing signs of aging. Recently, cracks developed in the tunnel connecting the docking port of the Russian Zarya module with its pressurized interior, resulting in air leaks. These leaks have been categorized by NASA as high-consequence risks that could become problems if not addressed soon. While the Russian space agency had the option to permanently seal the hatch between Zarya's pressurized cabin and its docking port, it would reduce the number of docking ports available to the Russian segment of the ISS from four to three, complicating operations. These issues emphasize the urgent need for a replacement or complementary commercial space station. NASA is aware of the situation and has not ruled out extending the ISS's operational life beyond its planned end in 2030, particularly if the commercial sector is not ready to take over by then. However, such an extension will be complicated by several factors, including the station's aging hardware, the political landscape surrounding international partnerships, and NASA's own funding challenges. Extending the ISS's mission will require significant resources, which may be difficult to secure in the current financial climate.